Okay, today um, we'll be looking at the topic um, projectile motion. First of all, my name is uh, John Obodo. We'll be taking uh, projectile motion in physics. In this particular topic, we will be considering a lot of aspects of uh, projectile motion and um, how it relates to everyday problems and challenges and application. Look at uh, gravitational acceleration uh, effects on projectiles. Okay, so we are going to look at um, the uh, application of projectile motion in warfare and um, in sports and uh, similar areas. Okay, basically, what is a projectile motion? What is projectile motion? And what is a projectile? Projectile motion is the motion of an object in which the object travels through a parabolic path. Basically, you say an object traveling through a parabola. A parabolic path travels through a projectile path or trajectory that is uh, parabolic in nature. Okay? So we consider the following. Okay? We have this an object that is projected in such a way that it goes through this form. And we have the velocity of projection, we have the height, and um, we have the, the range, and we have the angle of projection, the y axis, and the x axis. Okay? We're going to look at um, all these following terms with respect to the concepts. Look at the concept of projectile motion, the meaning of um, U, we look at uh, H, we look at uh, R, we look at theta. We we'll look at uh, t and uh, small t. U is the velocity of projection. Uh, uh, H is the maximum height. R is the range. Theta is the angle of projection. T, capital letter T, is the time of flight. And t, small t, is the time taken to get to the maximum height. OK, we we'll look at the equation for all these terms. But before we move ahead to that, we want to consider uh, the effect of uh, projector, uh, gravity, acceleration due to gravity on projectile motion. Now, when an object is thrown vertically upward, when an object is thrown upward, the object moves with a negative acceleration due to gravity. But however, when the object is coming down, the object moves with a positive acceleration due to gravity. Recall that G is 9.81 meters per second squared. Approximately, we can say that uh, G is approximately equal to 10 meter per second squared. So uh, we say that when the, an object is thrown up, then the G is equal to approximately uh, minus 10 meter per second squared. And when it is coming down, G will be 10 meter per second squared. So if we consider an object that is thrown upward such that it attains the height such that it attains the height, h. Okay? We consider the equations of motion that says v squared equal to u squared plus 2as. If we consider this equation, then we can uh, convert our a, the a to be equal to g, and the s to be equal to h. Then we can solve this problem for finding the h or relating to the velocity considering that the final velocity of projection is zero. So we say that uh, zero squared is equal to u squared minus 2gh, where our h is equal to u squared divided by 2g. So this is the height attained when an object is thrown upward. So when you throw an object upward, and you have the initial velocity u and g given, you can find the height of the object as it's going up. Okay, that is for uh, that. So basically, we have defined projectile motion, and uh, we have also looked at uh, the height in terms of when an object is going vertically upward. Now, a projectile is any object thrown by the assertion of a force. So when an object is thrown up, there is a force applied to the object for it to get to a particular point and come back to the point of projection. So examples of projectile. What are the examples of projectile? We look at a plate football in space and a play baseball, we look at um, a stone or pebble thrown into space, traveling through a parabolic path. We also consider a ballistic missile 
or intercontinental ballistic missile that is projected from a space station, or let me say, a military base. Okay? So, that is for that. So, this diagram depicts the uh, projectile motion and the basic parameters used to describe the projectile motion. Now, if you look at the diagram here, we consider this uh, diagram. We look at um, this, and uh, we have something of this nature. At this point, this is the object. This is the velocity of projection U, and this is the height, H, and uh, the range, the horizontal distance. This is the object. As the object is moving, it has two uh, velocities, or what we call two components of velocity. The uh, vertical component, UY, and the horizontal component, UX. This theta is the angle of projection. Okay? So when we analyze this based on uh, uh, trigonometrical ratios, we can say that uh, UY is equal to U sine theta. Okay? UY is U sine theta. UY is also known as vertical component of the velocity. Or you say the component of velocity along the Y axis. Okay? The vertical component of velocity. Vertical component of velocity. Of the velocity. And ux is equal to u cos theta. This ux is known as the horizontal component of the velocity, where your u is the velocity of projection of the projectile. So we have these two components, which we'll be using as we go along the uh, course, the lesson. Okay, at the maximum height, at the maximum height, at this point, the object has only one component at this point, which is the ux, and that is the u cos theta. However, the velocity downwards, instead of going up, here will be uy. And this uy is same thing as a u sine theta. Okay, that is u sine theta. But instead of going that direction, it will be negative. It will be a negative value. So at this point as well, the object is now going down. Is still having the horizontal component and the vertical component acting downward until it strikes the, the final destination. So that is the uh, similarity of what we have there. So from point O to point A or P or projection, we have the, velocity, the object traveling from this point through this point and to this point P. So all the basic parameters are UY and UX, H and R. Okay? So let's look at the formulas for the range, height, time of flight, and time to get to the maximum height. Okay. What are the terms in projectile? The following terms are used to describe a projectile motion. One, the velocity of projection. The velocity of projection is the velocity with which an object or a projectile is projected into space. Okay? That is the velocity of projection, which is what we have given earlier. And we also have the angle of projection. What is the angle of projection? The angle of projection is the angle with which the object is projected from the uh, base station or the projection point, inclined to the horizontal. So we have this theta as the angle of projection. This is the velocity of projection. U is the velocity of projection. Theta is the angle of projection. Okay? So we have your x and y axis respectively. We also have what we call the time of flight. What is the time of flight? The time of flight is the time taken for a body that is traveling from the point of projection to the destination point. The total time taken for a projectile to travel through the, from the point of projection to the point of destination, P. So that is the time of flight. And we also have the time taken to get to the maximum height. That is... This is the maximum height. So the time taken to get to this point is t. You can call that t. What is that time? Time t is what we call time taken. Time taken to get to the maximum height. And this time taken to get to the maximum height is, is equal to the time that the object we use to arrive at the H, where H is maximum. Now, to get this time T of flight, or time small T to get to the maximum height, 
we make use of uh, V. We make use of V equal to U plus 80. One of the equations of motion. Now, if you use V equal to U plus 80, here, considering this equation, at this point, our V is considered to be zero. And we have the U still outstanding. Then the uh, G, A, will be equal to negative G. A equal to negative G. So if you substitute into this equation, what do we have? We have our, our V, which is zero, we turn to U, but the U will turn to the vertical component of the velocity, UY. So U will turn to UY at this point, and that is a U sine theta. So when you substitute, we have U sine theta minus G. Because of this, minus G, then T. Okay? So make T the subject of formula. Our GT, if you transport this here, GT will give us U sine theta. Our T will be equal to U sine theta over G. So this time is the time taken for the body to get to the maximum height. Okay? That is the time taken to get to the maximum height. So if you want to get the time of flight, what is the time of flight? The time of flight, which is uh, the capital letter T, is given by capital letter T, and that is T plus T, or you can say 2T. This T multiplied by 2 will give us the time of flight. So our T will be equal to 2U, okay, sine theta over G. So this is called time of flight, okay? So the time to get to the maximum height is U sine theta over G. Time of flight is 2U sine theta over G. The two of them are not the same. We can say that uh, this time here, the capital letter T, is the total time because there's a T from here to here, T, and there's another T here, T. So when you add the two of them, you have this. But to get to this point, we make use of just a T to get to the maximum height. So that is the difference between time of flight and time taken to get to the maximum height. The next one there is what we call the range and uh, the maximum height. What is the range? The range is the horizontal distance covered. The horizontal distance covered by the object from the point of uh, projection to the point of destination. That is from here. We look at this diagram we have from this point, from this point to this point. So if I say this, oh, and this point of uh, destination. So from here to this point, we have the range. That is the horizontal displacement of the object. And this is the height. What is the height again? The height is the maximum vertical displacement covered by the projectile as it's traveling through the parabolic path. So that is the height, the maximum height. And the trajectory, the trajectory is the curve, the curve through which the projectile travels. So this curve is called trajectory, okay? You can also call it the parabolic path of the, uh, of the projectile uh, motion. You can also say flight path. Okay, so we have the range, the height, and the trajectory. So basically, I have explained these basic terms. Let us see the uh, next terms we have there. We're going to look at the equations. Equations for uh, time of flight, equation for height in projectile, equation for range of a projectile. Now, if you consider how to get the height of projectile, remember that we have stated that small t is equal to u sine theta over g. And big T is equal to 2u sine theta over g. Okay, so we have been able to solve this. Now let's see height in a projectile, or height of a projectile. How do you get the height? How do you derive the height attained by the projectile? To get the height, we make use of this formula. V squared is equal to u squared plus 2ax. V squared equal to u squared plus 2ax. What is the V here? If you consider the projectile motion, we have this. We have the height, again. And we have the range. This is the range, R, and the angle of projection and the velocity of projection. Here, the velocity at this point, V, is equal to zero. Okay? And the A is assumed to be G here. So assume it, okay, we can make it negative because it's going against gravity. So S here is equal to the H. 
that is the distance, vertical distance covered. So by the time we analyze this, what we are going to have is that um, we substitute into this equation. What we have is 0 squared is equal to, remember that your u is uh, the uy, which is the same thing as uh, u sine theta. So what we substitute into the equation, we have u sine theta all squared minus, minus 2gh, minus 2gh. So when we simplify this equation, what are we going to have? So when we simplify that equation, we have um, u0 equal to u squared sine squared theta uh, minus 2gh. What is the h? Our h, you make it a subject of formula, h we turn to u squared sine squared theta over 2g. So this is the equation for the maximum height attained by the uh, projectile as it's traveling through the parabolic path. Okay, so that is for the height attained. Sometimes we may remember to add your square to it. It's very important because if you don't add that square, we'll be having a wrong uh, estimation or calculation. So sometimes the angle determines the height. The angle determines the height, and um, if you're not sure of the angle that is given, then you are considering a vertical motion. Because when, a, when an object is thrown upward, when an object is thrown upward, we can assume that uh, the theta in that case is 90 degrees. When an object is thrown upward, vertically like this, theta is assumed to be 90. But also when the object is allowed to drop from a height, we assume also that theta is equal to 90 degrees. So we have two conditions for that. So what is the range? The range of the motion, range R, is the same thing as uh, doing this. Let's look at how we get the range of the projectile. Okay, we have the velocity again. We have theta. Remember we have here, which is UY, and the um, horizontal component UX. Okay, so UX is U cos theta. This is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So how do we find the range r? The range r can be estimated by using the equation uh, s equal to ut plus half at squared. s equal to ut plus half at squared. What is your s here? In this equation, we assume that s is equal to r and u is equal to u x and uh, t is the time of flight. t here is the time of flight. Let me write it in full. Time of flight. Okay? And the time of flight is t. So when we state all this formula, our a equal to g, now it is positive. Okay? Now since it is a horizontal motion, horizontal motion, when you consider an horizontal motion, the g is assumed to be zero in horizontal motion. So when a body is moving horizontally, we assume that g is equal to zero. But when, a, when an object is moving vertically, either upward or downward, g must have a value. In most cases, it is 10 meter per second squared when it is coming downward, or g equal to minus 10 meter per second squared when it is uh, going upward. Okay, so in this case, a equal to plus g and is equal to zero. Why? Because it's horizontal motion. Okay, so when we substitute all this, we have our ux is equal to u cos theta, and t is equal to 2u sine theta over g. So when we substitute this into the equation, let's call this equation one, we have the r is equal to ut plus half times zero times t squared. Now this t, remember that this t, we turn to time of flight, which is this, okay? So when we turn it to that, we have our range will be equal to u, x, t. Then everything here will be equal to zero. So we say plus zero. So our r is equal to u, x, uh, equation r equal to u x t. Remember that your t, the time of flight, is given as this. That is the equation. So we substitute u x equal to u cos theta into the equation. 
we have the range is equal to ux, which is a u cos theta multiply, you can multiply them, multiply by t, which is um, 2u, 2u sine theta over g. So when we simplify this, our r will turn to 2u squared sine theta cos theta over g. So we have this equation. But that's not the end. We can't just leave that equation in that format because we know in um, trigonometry we can easily simplify 2 sine theta. 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta. So if 2 sine theta cos theta is sine 2 theta, then we can change this equation for range to be equal to u squared sine 2 theta, sine 2 theta divided by g. Remember that it is not like uh, the case of the height, where we say that um, the height is equal to u squared sine squared theta over 2g. That is what we have for height. So for range, we have this. So they are not the same. Sometimes you may be asked to find the ratio of um, height to the range of a projectile. If you substitute that, we can simplify and say that is equal to u squared sine squared theta over 2g ratio uh, u squared sine 2 theta over g. So when we simplify this further, then uh, u squared, we cancel u squared, g, we cancel g off, and then um, we have sine squared theta, sine squared theta, over 2 sine 2 theta. So this is what it will give us as a final answer. But for that simplification in your trigonometry, we give you an answer to that. Okay, so that is for the range, okay? So we can also look at uh, some other relationship in terms of um, what is the maximum range that a body will project to attain a maximum height. Now, when you look at that part of the application of projectile, we look at uh, a body projected at a particular angle, theta equal to 45 degrees. What happens to the uh, range? Remember that your range is u squared sine 2 theta over g. So here, theta is 45. So our range will turn to u squared sine 2 multiply 45 degrees divided by g. So we have u squared sine 90 degrees over g. Now recall that uh, sine 90, sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. So when we substitute this, we have um, u squared over g. So when the uh, theta is 45 degrees, your range will be u squared over g. So you don't need to waste time and say, OK, you want to manipulate that. Just apply your velocity of projection, probably is given as uh, 10 meter per second. and um, you know your uh, acceleration due to gravity approximately 10 meter per second squared. So when we substitute there, our range will turn to 10 squared over 10. And that is 100 over 10, which is equal to 10 meter. Okay? There are some certain conditions that we try to uh, forget about the angle of projection. For example, when a body is projected from the top of a building, a building that is tall, and uh, you want to estimate the projectile, the range of the projectile. Let's say this is a building, and uh, the building has the height h. This is the building height. I want to project the body horizontally. It goes this way and drop on the ground. So the range in this case is different from what we have there, because here there is no angle of projection. So the velocity here is given as u. So how do we find the, uh, what we call the range in this case? We, for us to get the range here, we need to relate it with the time taken. So the range in this case, r, will be equal to the velocity of projection multiplied by the time taken from this point, a, to this point, b. Okay? So that is the range for this case. The height here, h, will be given in terms of uh, the formula. Uh, what do we have? Uh, s equal to ut plus half a t squared. We eliminate this one. And we assume that x equal to the height, and we say that h is half uh, gt squared in this case, because our a is equal to g. 
So here, to find this height, we use half gt squared. And to find the range, we use r equal to ut to find the range of this. Okay, so that is the equations for that. We'll just solve a problem or two and uh, seeing the application. First of all, let's quickly solve a problem uh, under this and uh, we see the application of projectile. Okay, we have a body. A body projected, a body projected projected with a velocity with a velocity of um, 100 meter per second at an angle at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal okay let's say calculate let's say calculate calculate one, Roman figure one, T, uh, Roman figure two, H, and Roman figure three, R. So take your G, take G equal to 10 meter per, per second squared approximately. So how do you solve this? For you to solve this, write out your parameter, draw your diagram. So what you do here is we apply the uh, diagram. In case you don't know, you sketch your diagram. So I know where you are going to. We have your theta. The theta is equal to 30 degrees. And the height, we are looking for the height, the range. We are also looking for the range. The angle, the velocity of projection is given as 100, 100 meter per second. Okay, so recalling the formulas. If you recall the formulas, we have uh, the T. We are asked to look for T. T is um, 2U sine theta over g. So when you slot in the values of your parameters, we have 2 multiplied by u. The u there is uh, 100. So we have 100 multiplied by sine 30 degrees or divided by 10. So we have um, 2 this. We have 200 sine 30 is 0 0.5 divided by 10. 0 cancel 0 here. 20 multiplied by 0 0.5 will give us 10. So we have 10 seconds. So for the body to travel from this point, A, to this point, B, it will take the body 10 seconds to get there. Okay, so the height, the height for this, to get the height, we make use of the formula U squared sine squared theta over 2G. Okay, so the U, what is the U there again? 100. So we have 100 all squared sine squared 30 degrees divided by 2 times 10. 100 squared is 10,000, so you have 10,000 multiplied by sine 30 is 0 0.5 or half squared, all over 20. So 0, 0, 2 here will give us um, 500, 500. So we have 500 multiplied by half squared, this is 1 over 4. Okay, so 1 over 4 times this, 4 in 5 is 1. And that 1, you have 2, then 5 meters. So 1 to 5 meters for the height. So the maximum height attained here is 1 to 5. So the range is equal to this. Range is a u squared sine 2 theta over g. So we have 100 squared again sine 2 times 30 or divided by 10. So 100 squared is 10,000 multiplied by 2 times 30 is a 60. So we have sine 60 all over 10. So we have 10,000 sine 60 is 0 0.866 divided by 10. So 0 cancels 0. Uh, 1,000 times this will give us um, 866.0 uh, meters. So that is the range of the uh, motion of this body that is being projected. So basically, I want us to understand this, that here we make use of sine square theta, and here we, we did use uh, sine 2 theta. So that's what we have here. We are still making use of our 30, but here we have to multiply the 30 by 2 so that we understand the difference between the two sides there. So that is for that. So basically, we look at um, the application of... Um, Okay, you are going to work on this as there are work examples. You can treat this as your exercises at home. Okay, what are the applications of projectile motion? 
Present motion is used in warfare, using uh, warfare, as well when we are projecting uh, intercontinental ballistic missile. And um, it's also used in sports like football, or where you play free kicks and all that, throwing, volleyball, baseball, javelin throw, shot puts, also using rocket and spaceship projection. When we project um, rockets into space, we apply projectile motion because to do the cap to project a rocket to the moon, you need to estimate the distance that the rocket is going to travel to the moon before you start projecting. Okay, so that is the uh, basic applications of projection. So at this point, I want you to enjoy the class, uh, uh, the worked examples or the exercises that is given to you. You can solve them and uh, look out for the solutions to that. And as you do that, uh, you enjoy it. Okay, thank you for listening.